recording. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the I2B2 Transmark Foundation Community Meeting for May 2019. My name is Rudy Potenzo, and I will be the host for this meeting. Uh, as usual, this is a go-to meeting. Uh, if you have questions, I'll try to, to monitor the questions, but um, along the way, uh, and we'll try to answer them where we can, but there will be a discussion period uh, at the end. Also, we do record these sessions, and uh, the recording, recording will be available uh, within a day a day or two, both on our YouTube channel, uh, the Foundation's YouTube channel, as well as on our website, along with the slide deck. I just need to make one quick change here so I can watch the questions. Get back to this. Okay. Uh, our agenda today is uh, shown here. We've got a number of topics that we'd like to cover, um, mostly uh, a number of things that, that we'd like to, to talk about quickly. And so uh, let's get started. Uh, let me bring uh, our uh, managing director, Diane Keo, uh, to, the, to the line. Diane? Hi, everybody. Um, welcome, and uh, thanks for joining us. Um, it's a beautiful spring day here. Um, hope, you're, uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, I'm going to just quickly cover a, a couple topics, and then we'll, talk, we'll jump into the, the meat of this. Um, so we, we will talk about the, um, the, the foundation sponsorship. Slide, maybe. Um, yeah, we, we, we uh, talk about this every month quickly just to sort of highlight the organizations that are, um, are helping us. Um, these are our contributing sponsors broken out by the Academic Medical Center at the top and vendors at the bottom. Um, these organizations uh, donate uh, $5,000 a year uh, to sustain the foundation. And next slide, we have um, also a, a corporate sponsor program. These are for larger organizations. Um, Takeda is our one corporate sponsor. We'd love to get more. Um, they donate an average of $20,000 a year um, to keep us going. And then we have, uh, next slide, Rudy, we have uh, sustaining um, sponsors. Um, these are organizations that are, are contributing um, like staff and, and things like infrastructure support, so our like AWS platforms um, and that type of thing. Um, if you're ever interested in, in providing um, staff support, you know, uh, providing QA support for our platforms or um, support for helping us to maintain our website or anything like that, um, certainly, you know, um, let us know and we can, we can talk to you about uh, becoming a sustaining sponsor. And then last, um, next slide, Ruby. Um, we also have uh, organizations that sponsor our um, events. And so these are the four organizations that have um, sponsored the, uh, the upcoming June meeting. Um, and we thank them very much uh, for helping us um, pull this, uh, this, this meeting together. The next slide I want to um, mention the, the Harvard Symposium that's coming up. It's just one month away. Um, so if you are coming and you haven't registered, uh, please register so we, um, we know we can have much food to order and that type of thing. Um, it is going to be in the Harvard area. Um, it's at Simmons College um, this year. Um, which is just literally a, a three or four minute walk from um, where it normally is. Um, uh, so it's, it's close by and that's on the first day. The second day is at Countway Library um, in the Harvard Quad. And here's a lineup of our speakers. So I'm pretty excited about um, this year. We've got a, a number of um, great external speakers that have you know, really interesting uh, topics to cover. Um, as well as you know, Zach, Sean and Paul that will <clears throat> talk about sort of our platforms. And then this year, we also really wanted to focus on use cases. This, this whole year, we're focusing on use cases. We'll talk about that a little bit more in this program. Uh, but we've got a great lineup of, of um, individuals who use the platforms and can really talk about um, how they've used it and the su successes they have. And then, of course, we have a, a spot, spot for our, um, our sponsors. So that's on the 17th. The next day, the second day, is really more of a um, sort of, you know, working groups um, and, and uh, you know, and, and that type of discussion. So the morning is broken out 
um, by the work group sessions, ontologies, user interface, um, uh, use cases, and ETL. Um, and then the afternoon, there's the, um, the ACT, um, the ACT network discussion group, and that's like a four-hour um, session. Um, you don't have to be part of uh, ACT to join if you're really interested in what they're doing. You know, certainly join that group. And then at the end, we have a, um, a foundation platform open discussion. And this is being chaired by Griffin Weber, who's um, chairing our um, new technology committee. So that should be very, very interesting. Um, throughout the day, you will have um, a, a, a workshop for anybody who's interested in implementing the, the new ICB2 Transmart platform. Um, and we also have a room that has the streaming um, video of the Precision Medicine Conference, um, which is uh, Zach Ohani's uh, uh, conference that, that unfortunately is the same day, but we wanted to, if people wanted to catch a session, we wanted to make that available to them. So that's, I'm really, really excited about um, this meeting. Um, I should also mention on the first day that it, it goes from 8.30 until 5, and at 5 there's a, a reception um, with you know, hors d'oeuvres and um, you know, beer and wine. So you know, please, please, uh, if you haven't signed up, please sign up. It's going to be a great day. Um, we actually just got a few more registrations in um, this morning, so we're probably up to 95. Um, you know, I'd love that number to go to 200. So, um, I, you know, hopefully people are people do things at the last minute. So hopefully that number will um, will go up as it as it normally does. So um, that's for June. And um, Rudy, I'll let you uh, talk a little bit about um, our uh, October meeting. Thanks, Diane. Um, we do have now set the dates and location for our October meeting. It's going to be at the University of Tübingen. Uh, in um, sort of South um, Germany uh, on October 8th and 9th. Uh, it's a, an old town um, and a lot of interest uh, locally there, interesting things to do uh, wandering around the, the city. Uh, the university um, has um, uh, been around for quite a while, over 500 years. I see I have a misspelling in the title, I will fix that. Um, uh, it's the place where DNA was first isolated, although they didn't know it was DNA, uh, and also the, the home of uh, Alwish's Alzheimer, who uh, was a German psychiatrist uh, who discovered the symptoms, uh, which we now know as Alzheimer's disease, uh, and a lot of other things uh, at the university. Um, we uh, have a, a several uh, local organizers. Uh, Oliver is uh, at Turbingen and, and is working on the arrangements. Uh, and, um, Hans Ulrich Prokosch and Ulrich Sachs are also uh, supporting us in terms of pulling the program together, as well as our events working group. Uh, this is the uh, events group. Uh, we are now starting to meet regularly to pull together the program. Um, but um, you know, if uh, if you are uh, hoping to come to the to the meeting uh, in October, uh, certainly uh, contact any one of us uh, with your ideas. If you'd like to to present uh, the website. Is starting to grow, uh, and um, there is, uh, I think, it's already a place if you want to submit ideas or presentations uh, for this session, for this uh, this meeting. Please, uh, now's a good time to do it. So that's that's what we wanted to cover here. Um, would like to give a, a quick shout out to our training program. Uh, this goes on throughout the year. We've uh, trained over 500 scientists uh, at this uh, at these sessions. Uh, these occur on the last Monday uh, of every month. Uh, we generally will have a training class, and uh, this uh, next week, uh, be, because of the Memorial Day holiday, this happens to be on the Tuesday next week. Uh, but um, Michael Mike Mendes will be presenting on, on the uh, I2B2 ontologies. Uh, so this is um, uh, an interesting session, and uh, maybe uh, you would consider joining that. Uh, you can see the other topics. Uh, throughout the year that we have uh, arranged. So um, please consider joining one of these training uh, programs because uh, they are very well received. They also are uh, all recorded and uh, you can view them uh, on our YouTube channel or from our website. Okay, uh, now we have a, a guest speaker, um, Michelle Morris from uh, University of Pittsburgh uh, is going to talk about an I2B2 plugin uh, that they have. Uh, and I will uh, ask Michelle to um, to do her uh, presentation and demo. Michelle? 
Okay. So um, I'm just going to do a quick description and demo of Sheriff, which is our computable phenotype plugin that we're working on at Pitt. Um, Sean Viseswaran is our PI, and uh, uh, Louisa is our programmer. Next. Um, so, Sheriff is um, kind of like a three-part little ecosystem. We have a I2B2 plugin, which allows us to use uh, I2B2 queries to create phenotypes and move them back and forth to the cloud. We use AWS, where the um, the phenotype is stored along with any supporting uh, documents. And then we also have a website that we're going to use so that we'll be able to share the phenotypes with uh, non-I2B2 sites. Next. Okay, so what we're doing is actually very, very simple. Um, one of the things we want to do is do a lot of reuse of existing uh, software to achieve our goal, but we wanted to see if we could make sharing phenotypes a little bit easier than some of the solutions that are out there. So what we did was uh, piggybacked off of I2B2, um, mainly because it's you know adopted by a lot of institutions around the country. It already had a UI for building the query, so we didn't think we needed to spend a lot of time doing that. Um, um, I'm a big fan of the abstraction layer, the query abstraction, because it supports inclusion, exclusion, occurrence, temporal. So I thought that was a really good place to start. Um, and it will allow us to bundle multiple queries into steps um, to be shared. And again, the XML is easy, machine readable, translatable. And it looks like my slide got all messed up, but... Um, <laughs> the yeah, sorry about uh, that. and then we <laughs> and then our uh, um, our storage we decided to use AWS. We were we played around with a couple of different things. We tried Git um, and things like that because at first we were really focusing on versioning and things like that. But um, we decided against it, and so we used DynamoDB for all of our structured um, storage, which isn't a whole lot of stuff, and then S3 to be able to. Um, store the attachments, you know, the PDF documents, um, and anything like that. Next. And then here is our little easy design. So basically what we did was we created two um, cells. The main cell is the cell that communicates with AWS. So it's the thing that allows us to push and pull um, information from the cloud into I2B2. And then we had we used mostly the existing CRC cells and I2B2 ontology cell, but some things we wanted to improve the speed a little bit. So we put any additional stuff into the uh, a new little cell that we, was like our sheriff ontology cell. So I think now I do the demo. Okay. I will change you to be the presenter. Okay. Okay, you should get a pop-up asking if you want to present. There you yes. go. I see your Got screen. It. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yep. Oh, Looks okay. Good. All right. So uh, this demo will be super fast. <laughs> so. It's just uh, a little plug-in, and there's our little sheriff hat. So the way it works is uh, you download uh, phenotypes from the cloud, and these are the ones that are in the cloud, and you can see that it has the same thing here. So this is our AWS instance here. Um, so those two things match. And then you can... Um, pick a uh, phenotype, and again, this is so simple, I feel silly, but um, uh, we uh, have like three different types, they're all the same basically, but just if you wanted to kind of tag what type of phenotype you're creating, um, Sean's group is doing a little extension and other work to try to fit this into the phase two um, act. 
stuff. So they're working on using this for clinical trials. Um, and it gives you an ID, you put in your little workbook title and that thing, and then you can, it also allows you to link to um, uh, additional documents. So in this case, this is the description that goes with the phenotype. This document is stored uh, on S3. Um, and so what we have is uh, the structured data, and then there's a little area in the DynoDB that will have contain all the links to the S3 documents. So you can put, you know, all kinds of, you can put zip files, PDFs, whatever. Um, we're hoping that we'll be able to use this maybe to have links for perhaps Docker containers that have NLP uh, implementations that people will be able to add that to their phenotype as well. And you can store a series of um, I2B2 queries. Uh, Another feature is it'll take these this series of I2B2 queries and put it into human readable format. So basically this is just, you know, all the different uh, codes that went into building that phenotype. Um, and then from here, you can also run the queries and it just uses I2B2's existing functionality to run the queries. So you can like run the queries, but we think the advantage is, so I just ran two queries. Once you run them, um, you know, you can have the instructions that go with it. Uh, once you run them, it makes it a local I2B2 query, so then you can build more complex queries, you know, with your instructions that will let you put multiple queries together. Um, uh, for a, uh, a richer uh, phenotype description. So um, that's kind of it. So if you create a new one, I'll just create a... Um, just a little one, just so you can see. You can choose some garbagey files here. And then it's really just a series of, I can just take a bunch of queries and just drop them. And what it's doing is when I save it to the cloud, what it does, it saves that to the cloud and it's, oops, can I refresh this? As you can see, I just made test mix and it's just saving the XML um, I don't know why it makes this panel so small, but it just saves the query XML as the um, phenotype along with the other um, fields. And that's kind of it. So then, um, Rudy, I don't know if you want to do the that's last great. slide. Yes. Um, I think I have two slides left. Yep. Unless One second, I will get there. Mm -hmm. Is it up or? No, it's coming. It says it's coming. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> oh. Didn't come. Just a second again. Okay. It's funny. I still see your screen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Could you um, stop showing your screen? Oh, let's see. How do I do that? Stop showing well, your screen. Joe, yeah. Stop. Okay. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Exact. Um... Do you still see my screen? I still see your screen, yeah. Well, you know what? I could just bring up the last slide on mine then. Why don't you do that? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Okay. So basically the last slide is just all the stuff that we haven't done that we're trying to want to get to. Um, so one of the things that we're doing now is we're spending some time going through the uh, phenotype. You know what, I, don't, and then I don't see your screen either. Just a second now. Oh, okay. 
Um, I think this is a go to webinar being a little bit crazy right now. Oh, well, I could just talk over it, I guess. We do have, well, we're maybe, um, th there was a question about availability of the plugin and the what license is it available um, with? So or, we don't have any licensing stuff on it, but we are looking for people who are willing to help test it with us and, um, you know, to install it and upload yeah. some ontologies, I mean, upload some phenotypes and, because we, what, one of the things that, the list that's not showing is we need to like figure out ways to validate what version of ontologies people have and whether their site will be able to execute the phenotype based on what ontologies they have available or what facts right, they right. have in their observation. Um, so that's this, the list I'm trying to show has a lot of that stuff. Um, Cause right now what we're doing is starting to try to fill it up with um, some of the non NLP public phenotypes that are like in the emerge to try to test and see if they behave the same as the emerge phenotypes. Um, we did run one test with the BPH um, from, I guess, the paper that, I don't know who did that, Sean and some other people did. So, and that worked out well. So, um, I don't know what's showing on the screen. Can you see, what do you see my screen now? I only see my, well, let me see. Oh, I do see your screen, okay. Okay, good. I do, yeah. So these are the long list, of course, the list of things we have to do are as right. longer than what we've done already. Uh, we need to work on versioning and permission and access, because right now everything just goes to a single uh, AWS login. So we need to figure out ways to be able to partition people's work um, if they don't want public access of their ontologies. Um, again, I said that we need to do some ontology validation. So right. we use the ACT ontology, but everyone's not going to have that ontology. So we need to find ways to do some validation of what's in people's observation fact before they go through all the trouble of running it and everything. Um, then one of the main things that we wanted to be able to do is to support cross-model um, phenotypes. So right now we're kind of reading through some of Jeff Klan's work to see if we can leverage some of his work and build it into doing the model translation and potentially ontology query translations um, to make it so that when people create phenotypes, uh, say with the ACT ontology, that they would be able to do it also um, in PCORI CDM or in a GPC Snow Shrine ontology. Uh, and, and, and and again, we have to build out more of the website to allow non I2B2 sites to share the ontologies, I mean, to share the phenotypes. So that's where we're at. And if anyone wants to help us volunteer to test or give us suggestions, um, we're definitely open to that. Uh, that's it. Super. I, th I think that, um, you know, some, uh, without having, you know, a license, uh, it may slow some people down in terms of being able to use it. So if, if you'd like, you know, if, some, if we could help you with that, you can let us know. Okay. Um, if you wanted, you know, uh, some, a lot of these get usually go, you know, can go with like an Apache license or something. It's very simple and it's an open license. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you want to, we could chat, chat about that offline. Okay. Well, cool. thank you very much. This looks really very cool. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions uh, for Michelle? For... Okay. And I don't see anything right now. Uh, it's possible you will get some more in a few minutes as we keep going. All right. It's copyright law. All right. Um, being, yeah. So um, I'm just going to give a real short uh, update on ITB2 Transmart. Uh, ITB2 Transmart is a uh, uh, a uh, activity from Paul VX Lab at, at uh, DBMI, Harvard Medical School. Um, he's been working on this for several years, bringing together uh, in a in a single environment basically the core capabilities of ITB2 and Transmart. Um, and uh, really, this is a you know you, you can look at this as a way to deploy applications um, 
uh, not necessarily every single feature and, and function of I2B2 or Transmart, but uh, a lot of the same look and feel and a lot of the core capabilities uh, are there. And uh, certainly, it uh, you know the potential is, is huge and uh, to be kind of a starting point for uh, customized uh, projects and, and uh, deployments. So um, it's uh, something that we've all been um, watching uh, as Paul and his group have been working together on these. Um, they had released a, a quick start version uh, a, a while back, uh, I guess about, about a year ago, just before the Harvard meeting last year. Uh, and they've been uh, updating that and that continues to be available. And they've been working towards a production deployment, um, which of course uh, requires a lot more planning coordination, a lot more documentation uh, to actually go into a full production of this uh, very complex system. Uh, Jason Stedman was was on this this call uh, a month or two ago and, and really went through a lot of the details. Um, but um, you know there are a lot of a lot of aspects of this as um, and driving this to production as you can see uh, in terms of how uh, you know to, to bring this all together. Um, and uh, where they are right now is that the um, you know this is uh, this is I to be to Transmart version 19.1. Uh, the quick start is still available. Uh, on the, uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, they have now just released Milestone 1, uh, which is available uh, over, the, over the last couple of days, uh, which includes um, picture UI, uh, the, the lo login features, uh, and it also has I2B2 1.7.10 and Transmart 16.2 uh, as the core pieces. Um, they are working to get to Milestone 2, which is expected later in the summer. Uh, where we're going to have uh, the, the latest version of Transmart, uh, version 19. Uh, we haven't really decided completely on the name yet, uh, and hopefully the latest version of I2B2. Uh, and going forward, uh, it's their intention to, to have always have the latest version of both of these uh, the core platforms as part of it, uh, and then adding a number of things um, to uh, the, the, the overall uh, environment uh, such as their high-performance data system that adds phenotypes and variants, uh, uh, integration with uh, Jupyter Notebooks and, and other things. And then the final full release uh, of this is expected at the, uh, the end of the year. Um, the, uh, the pieces that are available are available right now. You can get them on uh, the Viac Labs uh, GitHub, but we're in the process of uh, moving those over to the Foundation's GitHub and uh, we'll set out how to notice when that's available. So there'll be a lot more information coming on this, but um, uh, it, uh, you know, it's an exciting development and evolution of our platforms, and we think it's uh, something that um, will be interesting to, uh, to a lot of people in the community. So we'll hear a lot more about it over the coming months. Uh, finally, I'm going to invite Peter Rice to just give us a, 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 a kind of an update on the use case working group. Uh, Peter, thanks very much, Rudy. So we had a uh, use case working group has put together a survey, which we've uh, emailed out to people. We have um, quite a few replies. I see several people on the, the call who've replied already. But for those of you who haven't, uh, we'll send you a reminder after the, the call. If you could please go along and uh, just spend a few minutes filling out the survey. It'll ask you personal details like who you are and what your email address is. Um, do you use I2B2? And if so, it'll ask you some questions about what you use in I2B2, uh, number of patients you have, and that kind of information. Uh, if you use Transmart, it'll ask you which features of Transmart you use, and a couple of pages of information to, to just fill in some checkboxes and put some numbers in. And then at the end, it asks you success stories, what's really worked for you, and also any issues that you've had that uh, we need to pay attention to going forward. So it should only take about five minutes to, to fill out the basic survey. That's, that's how long it takes us when we tried it ourselves. Um, we'd really like to gather as much information as we can about the, uh, the users, particularly the users on the, these community calls, the ones who are really keen about uh, these platforms. OK. Thanks, Peter. And we'll, we'll send you a, a link in an email. It's, it's rather a long link, so I thought of putting it on the screen, but it's too long. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I was I was starting to pull together here, but uh, it was I agree. So our goal is to is to basically collect how people are using the various platforms, um, particularly find any published success stories, 
um, that show how well the platforms have been used. So for I2B2, I'm sure there are quite a few out there. For Transmart, because it's only been open source for a few years, um, it takes longer for things actually to be published. I know some projects I was involved in were five-year projects and they're just, just writing up their final publications now. But we'll gather as much as we can. And then we'll um, distribute summaries in a, a meeting coming up and we'll be trying to collect some more for those of you who come along to the meeting in Harvard. Okay. Thank you, Peter. So that uh, concludes um, our agenda for today. Uh, we'd be certainly happy to have any, uh, ask any questions. Um, and um, if you have a question, you have, uh, you can type a question into the question window. Uh, you can raise your hand or you can type a question into the chat window. So let's open it up now. Any questions on any of the topics that we covered today or other things? Not seeing any questions. Um, so I want to thank everyone. Uh, Diane, want to have any closing comments? Hey, I just want to say thanks for joining and certainly thanks for our speakers. Um, if, if anybody has topics they would like covered in, in one of these sessions, you know, please reach out to myself or Rudy. Um, you know, I think the, the work that Michelle and her colleagues are doing at Pitt is, is very important and certainly, um, you know, they're going to they're gonna need some help with testing it and some advice and kind of moving it to the next level. I think it has a ton of potential. So I'm sure there's other things that people are working on that they might want to get, um, you know, uh, the community involved in. So please, you know, this is what the the foundation is all about is using um, this as a platform for, for um, you know, sharing and, um, and working together. So I um, just want to make that plug. And um, these are those uh, use case survey is really important because getting those success stories and how you're using the platforms is um, really important to, um, to help us, uh, uh, you know, uh, for, for giving sponsorships and, you know, and grants and all kinds of things. So, um, yeah, wonderful if you could fill out the survey. Um, and uh, with that, I'll say, you know, have a have a great day and I see you know all of you in June. Okay, thank you. Bye everyone.